It's found! The E3 prototype of Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga has been discovered and dumped. This fan-favorite RPG was unleashed upon the world on the Game Boy Advance in 2003. Now both versions feature the Mario Bros on an adventure to restore Princess Peach's stolen voice, but this earlier version has significant differences. We're going to get to the major ones as well as some of the oddities. But first, a big thank you to the sponsor of this video, the makers of this t-shirt right here, Into the AM. They just launched their fall collection, and I love what they've added to their store. They have great color selections for their pullover hoodies, Henleys, and button-ups. I've also had the chance to wear their joggers, and frankly, they are pretty cozy. I can't decide if I like them better as workout gear, around the house lounging, or just frankly as pajamas, because again, pretty comfortable. They also have their not-so-normal graphic tees and other best sellers here on their site. Here are a few that I picked out for myself, this one that you've already seen, and this guy right here. They have great fit, conversation starting designs, and thankfully they are shrink resistant. So go check out Into the AM if you want to upgrade your wardrobe and elevate your style. Click the link in my description for a 10% discount, and they also have packs if you're planning to buy a bunch and save more as it stacks with my coupon code HRG-AM. Nintendo. Jumping back in here, here are the finished game's boot screens for reference. And now look at the prototype. No Superstar Saga subtitle here. Notice the Game & Watch looking Mario Brothers running along a beanstalk at the top too. An obvious nod to the Bean Bean Kingdom where the game takes place. In the retail version, we get a full options menu, obviously. And we also have a remake of the Mario Brothers arcade game built right in. The E3 demo, on the other hand, is, well, just that. A demo. At least, on the surface anyways. We're treated to a few pre-created experiences, all taken from the first few hours of the game. We have Stardust Fields, Ufu Mountain, renamed Huhu Mountain in the final build, and Mammalian Plain, I think I'm pronouncing that right, which are the fields before Bean Bean Castle Town. Now, do I stop here to talk about how the file select is totally different? No, let's just go ahead and move on. There's so much here. Now, the demo stages are rearranged custom tidbits that sort of have a parallel existence to the actual game. For example, Stardust Fields. Normally, you crash land here with Bowser and almost immediately encounter the Border Bros, who make you play a mini-game to cross the Mushroom Kingdom slash Bean Bean Kingdom border. The demo is reversed and truncated. You'll actually encounter the Border Bros at the end. So you'll just start here without context and begin to explore. Take a look at this here. Here's the demo map. Here's the retail map. Now the screens that you see in the retail map are in the prototype, but just not in the preset demo experience. And they are the same, minus some aesthetic design choices. But again, for the demo, they shortened and streamlined it for the E3 player. The demo also immediately equips the Mario Brothers with techniques and items that they would either learn in this stage, like the bro moves, or the hammer, which they wouldn't acquire until a little bit later on in the game. Now, if you're familiar at all with the title, you've probably also already noticed how incredibly different the interface is. But don't worry, we will get to that soon. In the final retail build, there's funnier and quirkier Border Bros dialogue. They seem to remember you from a previous game and insist you perform jumps worthy of the Mario Brothers name. In the demo, however, you must perform a jump worthy of a resident of the Mushroom Kingdom. Also note the design and color changes in the room. After beating the minigame, the demo stage ends. Now, before we touch on the massive design differences between these two different versions, I want to talk about one more of the demo stages, which is the Mammalian Plane, a name which doesn't exist in the retail game. Now, this is just one slice of the map. On the bottom left corner, you'll see the retail footage. The main footage is the prototype. You'll notice totally different enemies populate the landscape, as well as paths that exist in the retail game that are closed off here. 
The demo is a walled garden, so to speak. One unique enemy you'll see here is the Wiggler, which only appears as a mini-boss in the retail game. Notably, the Wiggler is sleeping, which is also not a sprite nor animation that's used in the final build. And there are other enemy differences as well, mostly design-wise. For example, this prototype Goomba has gray shoes. In the final, they're brown. But let's go ahead and move on to some juicier changes. When you enter a battle, the transition is totally different. It's always a star in the retail game, always a mosaic of mustaches in the pre-release. Notice the selection of jump and hammer are separate ring commands. versus the final, which contains both within a single menu. As you can also see, many of the fonts and italics, etc. are changed as well. Running away from a battle is a true activity in the final build, with necessary button commands. Not the case in the pre-release. Eating a health-boosting mushroom in the prototype is also a rather simple affair. You just absorb the power up like the normal games. In the retail build, you pull it out and eat it. Mario. Dying is also a lot different. In the retail game, your character stays on the battlefield, and your brother can force feed you a 1-up mushroom. Yeah. In the earlier version, the KO'd character leaves the battlefield. Once receiving the 1-up, a power-up sound would play, and then they'd be elevated back down into play. The bros' moves have different icons for the A and B buttons as well, and the prototype seems to be more lenient with the timing, although that could just be me. Leveling up increases all traits, and the player can choose a few bonus points to go toward a stat of their choosing. The bottom one is Stash, which is similar to Luck. It gives the character a better chance of getting a critical or lucky hit in battle. In the prototype, it still has its Japanese name. Dying is also a bit more of a morbid affair in the pre-release. It's so sad. Mama mia. Compare that to the final build. You don't have to wallow in the death of the Super Mario Brothers nearly as much. Now like the start game menu showed earlier, the end game menu also features a different design. Here's what it normally looks like. Pretty typical looking passport photos with four main options on the left side. The earlier version has six options on the left side and much cutesier passport photos. And of course the menu is also not designed like a suitcase here. Overall there are just a ton of big design differences as well as little touches that haven't been implemented yet. Different block designs, world map warp pipes being red instead of green, even transition effects between scenes that were added to the final build that are missing here. Again, I could make a 30 minute video for every tiny little detail, but these things are being documented as we speak. Consider this video a crash course. Big thank you to Zoda Y13 for finding, dumping, and releasing this amazing discovery. And thank you for allowing me to have this first sneak peek at the prototype and allowing me to make my video and time it with this release. And that is right, it is being released and you can check it out today over at the new preservation group called Codebound. Link in the description below. Aside from that, thank you, the audience, for watching. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. It definitely helps the channel grow, and we are hoping to get that sweet, sweet 100K subscribers within the next year. Thanks again, and hope to see you all back for the next one. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and wanted to let you all know you are invited to a live Hard for Games meet and greet at the Detroit Retro Video Game Show on November 4th. Details in the description below.